Alright, it's the day before I travel to Dovrefjell along with Trun and the rest of the guys. And all the things you see here right now, they are the things that I'm planning to bring with me on that adventure. And last year I learned a lot. It was a very cold trip, so I bought some new things this year that will help me deal with that if uh, the weather turns out to be just as cold. Mind you, it does not look like that on the uh, on the weather forecast. It's going to be a bit warmer, but it's still going to be roughly minus 10 degrees approximately. So I thought I was going to show you the new items that I've acquired for this adventure. And I'm going to start off with my new mountain boots complete with uh, wool inner soles perfect to keep warm i uh, used these already on a few hikes and they're a brilliant i love them best shoes i've ever had also i've acquired new mittens really good shell mittens uh, outside and inside wool wool mittens as well and the best part with these is that you can Hang them on your arm. And last year all my microphones froze to death. So I've acquired a new microphone which I'm talking into right now. My water froze last year when I was uh, trying to drink. It was just a massive bulk of ice. So I bought a new water bottle which will prevent my water from freezing. And I bought a new thermos that will keep my water warm. So I can make some uh, coffee and some... Uh, soup or some uh, oatmeal on top of the mountain almost forgot i bought a new lens the 100 to 400 for the micro four third system so this is basically on a full frame it's 200 to 800 millimeters so this allows me to get pretty close to the muskox i love it I've, i used it already and it's a massive upgrade from the 100 to 300 millimeter i had last year and uh, i'm gonna bring this the 70 to 200 millimeter for the s1 also, I bought a new photo bag, photo slash hiking bag, which I will receive when I get to uh, Stavanger. Tron has it, so uh, looking forward to try that. It's, it comes with, an, with its own ICU. It's 80 liters, so this that bag will replace this on my future hikes. All right, I'm going to pack this into this bag, and then I'll start traveling to Stavanger.
I am very happy and a bit cold, but most of all, very happy with the first day up here at Overfjell. We saw five animals and I actually think I, I got one or two decent photographs. I especially liked the ones towards the end with the pink sky up in the background. I hope those work out nice. But it was really cold to operate the camera and it was a bit clumsy with the, with the, with the mittens. But I really hope some of them came out clear. I hope so. But it, I'm, I'm super excited right now and we're currently on our way to the car. Just trying to walk to keep warm and get back to the cabin and make something good to eat. It's been a blast. Speak to you all soon. Signing out. Last year Tron interviewed me and he asked me what kind of photograph I wanted out of Muskox while I was up there. And I told him that if I could pick from the top shelf I would want a Muskox a bit far away, mountains in the background and some beautiful light and you can just see the Muskox in its natural environment. And last year I didn't get it. I almost got it but I didn't. But last night, last night when I walked back home in the northern lights with the wind whipping in my face really cold i knew i had it in in the camera bag it was a beautiful day yesterday it was really windy and really cold and it really gave you that feeling to be outdoors in the elements but it makes you think about how much i respect these animals that are built for these conditions they are just there they are robust and stoic goats <laughs> it's they're magnificent the other lads are inside eating coffee so i'm going to join them eating coffee actually they're eating breakfast so i'm going to join them in a minute but i just wanted to talk a bit about yesterday and a bit about today because today we're going to the place we were last year Högsnitta. we've heard that they've seen some animals there so we're going to try at a new place today Day two, I am ready. The weather is slightly more warm today than it was yesterday. It's, it's almost too warm. But one thing I've learned over the years is that you should never complain about being warm. See you at the top.
it's been roughly a year since I was at this very spot up in Dovofjell with Högsnitta behind me. And I gotta say that this, this place, it's still as beautiful now as it was the last year. It's still as white, it's still as pristine and untouched, and I still get that adventurous feeling wandering here. The weather is beautiful, it's warm right now, and I can see my fellow comrades further up the hill, so I'm gonna keep on going to catch up with them. Hopefully they see some animals up there. We have something in Norway called Fjellvetreglane. Which are basically rules or guidelines for safely traversing the Norwegian mountains. In English this translates to the Norwegian Mountain Code. These guidelines pretty much hang on every cabin refrigerator around in Norway and even though the rarest among us can name them all by heart, we all know at least one or two. And there are ten in total. One of the more famous rule is Ven i tie, da ingen skam og snu. Don't be ashamed to turn around. In this lies that you must recognize a potential bad situation before it's too late. And it's well known that mountain weather is fleeting and unpredictable. When we started this hike, I took off my sweater. Now, one hour later, I'm searching for every layer I brought with me. The wind whips at maybe 18 meters a second, and at 10 degrees below zero, this can get cold very quickly. This is no time to lose your hat or your mittens. The wind was so bad at every interview I did with Trun and Espen, I could not salvage a word from it, even though the windscreen were pretty powerful. But what we're trying to say in this clip is that there are 13 animals in a valley just below us. And in order to get to them, we have to turn back and head into the valley from the bottom. So we started the descent into the valley, but in the back of our minds, the Norwegian mountain code number eight started to ring. Don't be ashamed to turn around. We had a few hours of daylight left. We are one hour away from the muskoxen and from that spot, maybe two or more hours away from the car. It would get dark. The wind were picking up speed and we were heading into a valley where none of us had been before. A potential bad situation. We decided to turn around. back. It's too late in the day and by the time we get there it's gonna descend into darkness and then we're gonna have to find our way back home in the dark. So we decided to head back. This is a bummer. Disappointed? I'm very disappointed. I don't know how, how long we've been walking now. It's, it feels like three four hours and uh, maybe we have to turn back. Better to play it safe. There's always a day tomorrow as well. That's true. That's the spirit. <laughs> Even though we didn't meet any more animals on day two, that doesn't mean that the day was wasted. Not by a long shot. We had a great day outdoors, filled to the brim with exciting weather and stunning views. I love walking in the mountains, especially in the snow, so I have very fond memories from this day. And if you're worried that we didn't meet any more animals on day three, don't be. Because the best is yet to come. And in the meantime, here are some landscapes I photographed during the second day. Until next time, take care.